What's up guys? Today we're going to be talking about F1 Esports. <laughs> now, many of you will know that I have been recently in the background just dipping my toe into the water of F1 Esports. Um, sim racing, gaming, call it whatever you want. This is an industry that I am just finding out is way bigger than I ever imagined that it would be. And last week I went to a really cool event up in Birmingham. It was the Black Book of Motorsports Digital Summit. Now the Black Book of Motorsport, great organisation, run annual events for the motorsport industry to bring uh, leaders in various key elements of the motorsport industry together to, to share thoughts, to discuss the future, future projects. And this time around it was all about digital. There were loads of people from lots of different types of motorsport discussing lots of different digital areas within their, their worlds. The bit that I was really interested in though was F1 esports. The past year has seen massive growth in, in esports, you know. For, for the motorsport industry, there's a lot of parallels between the real life world and our, our virtual world. And in the past couple of years, we've seen esports just explode. That was Julian Tan, who is F1's head of esports and new growth. Formula One were there talking about just how big a part of their future this is going to be. And what it really highlighted for me, what it brought home, was the sheer scale of this industry because it is a standalone industry but crucially it has the biggest crossover if you like of any of the esports industries with their real world counterparts. The similarities between real life racing and racing on a rig or a, on a, an Xbox controller in your home, in your bedroom, wherever you might be doing it, the similarities are far bigger than for example playing FIFA you know as a footballer or something like that. The, the skill sets can transfer over to a certain degree. Not only was it really interesting to hear the thoughts of Formula One from Julian Tan, which was fascinating, it was also equally, if not more interesting, to hear the opinions of the teams, and some of the teams were represented there. Now, to give you an idea of what F1 has done in the field of esports, it really they started in 2017 with a pretty low-key event in Abu Dhabi, the final race of the season. I was there. They set up the last garage in the pit lane as the studio, if you like, as the gaming centre. Uh, a whole kind of row of uh, gaming rigs set up. And then competitors, finalists, who had taken part in online uh, trials or online uh, competition. The finalists were taken to Abu Dhabi, put into the middle of the paddock. And, and competed in a final. Now it was a successful event, it went very well, it was quite big, uh, but I clearly remember the F1 fraternity, the people within the paddock, the established media, the established people within the teams, kind of, I think it's fair to say, they turned their nose up at this whole esports operation that had suddenly been dumped in their glorious paddock. These people who, in their minds, had worked for years, most of their lives, to achieve the status required to justify their being within the paddock and yet these young spotty teenage kids who'd spent most of their life gaming in their bedrooms had suddenly been dropped into the heart of this sacred world which is the F1 paddock. That's I'm sure the feeling, it might, I may be exaggerating to some extent, but that was the feeling of lots of people within the F1 paddock. Well that has all changed. In 2018, F1 upped the game with their eSports program. They introduced the Pro Series, and that meant getting the backing of the Formula One teams. Now, having said what I just said about the Formula One teams in 2017, when they first experienced this whole eSports world, whether they came under some pressure from Liberty, I suspect they did, to start backing the eSports championship because it was such a big part of F1's future plans, or whether the F1 teams literally just saw the opportunity before their very eyes that was in front of them. 
And what an opportunity it is! <laughs> the F1 gaming industry, the esports industry, is huge. The fan base is huge. If you're a Formula One team, you have an opportunity to grow your own fan base enormously. And off the back of that, of course, a huge number of marketing opportunities present themselves as well. Money-making schemes. Now, everybody in Formula One is trying to make money. Everybody's desperate to make money because it's an expensive business. You can't grow your fan base just through racing in real-world Formula One at the rate that you have the opportunity to by getting involved with an esports team. So now, nine out of the ten Formula One teams, the only one who's not involved yet is Ferrari. Everybody else has their own competitive teams in professional esports racing. And I suspect Ferrari won't be too far behind. They have to get involved in this, and I'm sure they will. It won't go unnoticed that one of the biggest videos that I've had on my channel recently was the day that I met up with Jimmy Broadbent. He's one of the legends in esports on YouTube, and, and he has a fan base of people that, you know, not only are into esports, but are into watching esports. And just like the real thing, just like real world racing, and this is what I'm discovering right now, and I'm discovering it <laughs> the hard way, realising that I'm definitely not as good as I thought I was at this stage. But what I'm realising is that people, just like with real Formula One, they watch professional esports racers because they're watching somebody that they believe is doing something superhuman. They're doing something that they think they could never ever possibly achieve. And that is what any high level, absolute top level professional sports is all about. It's about watching the superstars do what they do best. And that means that the numbers of people now watching esports and F1 esports is growing at an incredible rate. When you tie in the two fan bases of real, real world Formula One and F1 esports, you have this collision of worlds and not all of it will cross over, but some of it definitely will. So Formula One will gain fans that got involved through the gaming side. And the gaming side is definitely, and I'm one of these, gaining fans from people who started life as a real world Formula One fan. It's an absolute match made in heaven. There were some really interesting questions. <laughs> Never take your eyes off the screen, Elvis. <laughs> there were some really interesting questions being raised at this event that I was at. Can real world racers, so real racing drivers from the world of F1 or other motorsports, can they cross over into the sim world and can it work the other way around? Can sim racers be professional racing drivers in real cars on real tracks? Does the skill set crossover? And the answer unequivocally is yes. We've already seen gamers become professional racing drivers. Nissan, and they had a representative there, had, have a, an unbelievable program that has generated the likes of Jan Mardenborough, who started gaming in his bedroom, is now a professional racing driver, factory racing driver for Nissan, and doing very well for himself. The WRC representative that was there said something really interesting that I had no idea about where he said one of their top level racing drivers, rally drivers, lost his seat for 2017. And instead of trying to find himself a new seat in a racing car, he decided to get involved in esports. He took on the uh, WRC challenge of, of esports championship. He did very well, he qualified, he got to the final, he won the entire event. So a real racing driver won the WRC esports gaming event. He won a huge prize, financial prize, probably more money than he would have won if he was in a real car. So that then begs the question, what does the future hold? Because up until this point, kids who've wanted to get involved in motorsport have had to have a, a parent who would take them karting, who would pay for them to go karting. And then when you start raising the level, who would sustain that payment and that commitment to take them karting? traveling around the country and then around Europe, trying to push up into racing cars. And the, the expense of that is enormous. Well now, you can do it all from your own room, you can do it from your bedroom, you can do it from home. You can do it with minimal expense. We're opening up this platform 
without boundaries to pretty much anybody who can afford or at least get access to a rig or a computer game. And then the question is, well do these kids who are starting off gaming, do they even aspire to become real life racing drivers anymore or actually is the aspiration to become a top level sim racer? Because the reality is that the prizes, the, the finance, the financial reward for being competitive and being successful in sim racing actually outstrips the financial reward for most levels of real world racing. It's a really interesting question about where the future of motorsport is going and where our future stars are coming from. And then of course it poses the wider question of what it means for the industry because there was lots of chat at this event about big sponsors now choosing to get involved in esports over and above their real world counterparts. The big sponsors that put so many millions, hundreds of millions into sponsoring live sporting events like Formula One that have huge global reach on television. Well, how long will that last for? Because actually they can reach a very specific target market, an enormous market through eSports and that eSports will be promoted through the main F1 channels as well so potentially they're getting the best of both worlds. How much are the teams going to get involved in this? How big are these eSports departments going to become? Will they start using their eSports programs as a direct crossover, a direct link, a direct test facility if you like for the real world motorsport program? Will they use them as part of the simulation process that we already have? Will they expand that? And how big a Formula One going to go? There was lots of talk about how in 2017 there was a very, very small low-key event culminating in that uh, event in Abu Dhabi. In 2018 it was much bigger. It was a big, standalone, well-produced event, uh, three separate events uh, as it was throughout 2018 with the involvement of all of the Formula One teams. Well, for 2019 and beyond, they are looking at how they tie that in with the F1 motorsport calendar. And this goes across all types of motorsport, it's not just F1. We're looking at all the different types of platforms talking to each other, coming together to maximise this uh, as, a, as a platform, as an industry. We are literally scratching the surface. F1 have been incredibly late to the party in the world of esports, but they've arrived and their plans for the future are significant. So whether you think it's a bit daft, silly, just kids mucking about on games in their bedroom, whatever you think of it, you need to be prepared for the fact that this is going to become a big part of real world motorsport. So you might as well embrace it. <laughs>